Welcome everyone back to another Dragon Ball Super Card Game video. My name is D-Free. In this, we will go ahead and talk about the new Janemba leader, and we will also talk about his negate card that came out alongside the card, uh, or has been leaked alongside the card. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for more content. Make sure you join the Discord down below to talk to other players that play this game. Also, I do have channels for all of the many mobile games I play on my channel as well. So if you guys want to join the Discord, interact with more of my community, feel free to link is down below in the description. Huge shout out to John Ramirez and the uh, Dragon Ball Super Card Game community discussion group over on Facebook as well for these early leaks. So again, this apparently is a leak from the demo deck that is coming out, but Blue has not officially been revealed as far as I know as of right now on the official Dragon Ball Super Card Game website for Set 5 yet. But Janemba, very, very generic leader on the front side. You have to mill two cards from your deck, and then when he swings, you draw a card. Not a bad thing. Very, very normal, pretty much vanilla. When he awakens, he untaps two energy, and we switch over to the front side, or the awakened side, excuse me. Supreme Evil Janemba. When there are five cards in your drop, when he attacks, you draw a card, and it gets 5,000 power and critical for the duration of the turn. Activate main as a secondary ability. Choose one card in your hand and place it in the drop area. During this turn, when your opponent activates a counterplay card, they choose three cards from their hand and place them in the drop area. So the first half, I'm going to talk about that. That allows this guy to be a very disgusting aggro leader, especially because unyielding trunks is still a problem because he is exclusive to blue. Like, I don't really have like a gripe with like, unyielding trunks, but it's just blue starting to have a lot of really, really, really... Uh, powerful exclusive cards with that and with flu flu was so powerful it needed to be limited and things like that and all of a sudden we have another scenario where blue is just too overwhelmingly good right and that allows this guy again to be a very very effective aggro leader because you will always assuming you do not play overwhelm this seems like a lot of this set is trying to phase out overwhelm but that's fine you don't really need to play it if you don't play overwhelm you literally or even if you do you only need five cards in your drop that's a few combos whatever Anyways, uh, assuming you have five in your drop, you will always be 5k stronger than the opponent's leader. You always also plus one a card to your hand. You also always do critical damage, which then, which can be comboed with things like a Champa or the Supreme Kai to add double strike critical. Like, it's, it's disgusting. This leader, it, it has a really, really powerful ability having natural critical hit built into the card. Just like that new Krillin that came out as well. Uh, there's the Vegeta. I think there's also another one. So, like, these leaders that are able to do that are able to play the game very aggressively. So, there's that. But he also doubles as a very powerful control-esque leader. So, the ability to literally say to your opponent, hey, if you even consider playing a counterplay card, you have to neg three cards out of your hand. So, you're literally minusing four in order just to stop one thing I play, really, because it's a counterplay, whether it's... Um, uh, it, it's cold bloodless, I believe, you know, something like that. Whether it's crusher ball, you're kind of like literally telling them, hey, your hand is six cards, whatever. You have to pitch four of them, three and the one you're activating if you want to play that card. That is incredibly punishing. And again, assuming that I'm pretty sure cold, uh, cold bloodless is, I haven't used that card or looked at it in a while because it's been, for the most part, kind of dead uh, in this new format. But, you know, assuming that card comes back to relevance, which I'm expecting it to, to uh come back to relevance because all the Frieza army stuff we're getting um well it, he's gonna be that card's gonna be very common and Janemba is just going to hard counter that deck because it's not going to be able to have answers for a lot of the threats that Janemba would wind up playing no matter what's in this deck if they can't play something that they almost rely on it's getting subbed out every match and things like uh crusher ball things of that nature it's going to get really really hard for some leaders to play against this guy just because of their play style and that's what I'm anticipating um, otherwise, I feel like he has a little too much ability, but I mean, I don't really think it's game breaking, but it's just going to be a very bad matchup for those Freeze army leaders or decks that mix in yellow and things like that. But it does not stop counter cards because it says counter play. Uh, that means it doesn't stop negates like flying Nimbus. If it was just when your opponent activates a counter, that would be, that would be, be a game breaking because what that would do is it would literally tell your opponent, hey, don't even consider it activating a negate. If you activate a negate at all, you also have to pitch your whole hand. So, I, I mean, it's, it's disgusting. That, that, that would be gross. So I get why they did this thematically, trying to make it a reference to the movie, but that shouldn't be a thing in the card game. So, like, I don't know. But otherwise, I think Janemba is playable. I think he's really, really good. Blue is just getting a lot of love. We still have Gogeta probably coming out in the blue group as well. There's a lot happening here. 
Uh, so it remains to be seen what happens with the other colors. Hopefully they get some more momentum. But moving into the main problem child for a lot of people here today is to mention magic. This is a blue exclusive negate. The other colors also got exclusive negates for them uh, in the set five bracket as well. So this one is exclusive to blue. When, you, when your leader card is blue, negate the attack. Then choose up the two of your blue energy and switch them to active mode. Sparking five, when you have five cards in your drop, you can activate this card's counter skill from your hand by adding a card from your life to your hand instead of paying its energy cost. So you can activate it for free if you have five in your drop. Uh, these free negates are going to be really, really interesting. Like, I felt like set four and stuff like that, having instant transmission and sacrifice, those were very, very niche because of the leaders they were restricted to. But they were very, very good if you had any chance to play those cards because they literally saved you. And these cards are having, you know, additional abilities. I don't really think those cards too much had. But the ability to untap two energy is good and bad. So it allows to keep with the theme of blue. Blue has always been energy manipulation, whether it's the leaders or the other cards that are in the package of cards. But this one sticks to that. Now, ways this card could have been worse is if it was something that had let you do it on your turn, right? or if it was something that was able to untap two energy, period. So if it was able to say untap a yellow and you were able to use another yellow card like flying Nimbus, that would be disgusting. Using this, being tapped out, ending your turn, using this, adding a card to your hand to replace this one in your hand, then using a flying Nimbus, that would be disgusting because from there you went from having no yellow energy to having your opponent literally only be able to make one more attack because you just negated two. They're at a point where they get one more battle card attack and then the leader attack, and that's it. And hopefully they didn't swing with the leader, and you didn't negate the leader. <laughs> so that would be gross. But two energy is, I feel like that's manageable. It kind of it kind of reminds me of the Zeno button, because the Zeno button says you want to tap all of your stuff. And it's also, I believe, a, a zero cost, right? And it's a counter, so a counter attack or something like that. So like... It seems like it's that type of ability, and I don't, you know, I don't think anybody really has a problem with Zeno Button. So if you if you don't have a problem with Zeno Button, I don't really feel like you should have a problem with this card otherwise, because they kind of do the same thing. But what I can say is that the ability to do this again for free, untap two energy, transition from here into like a Senzu Bean, and then untap a green energy or yellow energy to allow you to play other powerful counters or things like that, like a Flying Nimbus again is disgusting but that's still multiple cards just for you to play defensive but it is nice to have the utility so that's interesting it's it's a plus one to your hand it is uh it, it's it's a plus one to your hand but really it's not because you play the card but it's an even uh you're not negging anything but i feel like this card i don't think it's broken i don't um the untap two what it will do like i said is it just kind of won't allow you to break through some of these barriers this deck will set up. That's the thing. I think that's really the thing because they're going to play threats on their turn. They're going to try to push you, but they can't push you. You'll be tapped out or you will be in a position where you're not tapped out and then you untap two energy, right? That's another thing too is it's literally a Senzu Bean minus the 5k pump. Whether you don't have to pull the life or anything like that, you can just activate it and re ready another energy, you know? Uh, and tap the two energies still and you can transition into using uh, you know the uh, Gohans or whatever you need to do unbreakables and it just enables some really really degenerate things uh, this coupled with Senzu Beans then on the offensive side Senzu Bean and unyielding and all that and then if you're playing Soul Striker like there are a lot of ways that blue is way too efficient at manipulating energy it seems which is why I understand the people getting upset about this so for me I don't really think it's a huge issue but we'll have to see what happens but anyways have an awesome day and I will catch all of you in the next one.